Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, a short video just looking at some of the faults of some of these uh, Commodore 64 chips. Um, I had a couple here with the white dots on that were in my sort of spares collection. Um, neither of those were, both give a black screen. Um, this one is a functioning one, the third one. And this one with test stuck on it. This is the one I showed recently um, in a recent video whereby I identified a problem with one of the pull ups um, on pin 2 there, I think it was. Yeah, it was which was the up direction and uh, actually I've put in VCC into there just for a second start working again and I remeasured it just afterwards and the resistance levels changed and I'll show you that you can actually see it's still not quite right but it's um, it, it made a difference I don't know why but it made a difference um, and that chip does work but it just causes um, Last Ninja 3 to skip um, and I think I had problems with the fire button on that particular game as well depending on whether it skips the, the, the intro or not so uh, yeah that chip does work I, I'm using it for test purposes and in, in my test board here but um, yeah anyway nevertheless I thought I'd just have a look at some of these I always like to do this I always keep you know and you can see here I've got an old, uh, an old SID that I found when I was looking for my spares as well uh, from the C64C um, it's faulty, I think that gives a black screen. Um, a PLA, it gives a black screen. A PLA I've just removed from another board that gives some multi colours and things in it, but initially gives a black screen. And I just like to try and compare, you know, do measurements where I can um, and compare from chip to chip uh, and against working chips just to see what sort of readings I get um, internally. Um, well, externally, I can't measure internally, but you see what I mean, just to compare to see what's what. Um, so if I just take some readings here, um, pin one. I think is, let's look at my diagram here, let's have a quick look. Yeah, pin 1's ground, pin 20 is VCC. So if we look at this good chip, uh, and I just measure from um, the VCC, put it on resistance mode, and we measure pin 2, you can see what we're getting here is the internal um, pull up resistance. It looks like 1.3k roughly. And if we go along, bear in mind this is a good chip. And all these bottom pins are sort of I.O. pins up to the last three, I think. Up to like pin 17 or something. So look, th what, 1300, 1300 roughly. 1300. These are all, like I say, um, pull-ups that we're measuring here as far as I can gather. There's going to be some, there might be something else we're measuring as well at the same time. But I think it's a safe bet that those are the pull-up values of approximately 1300 ohms keep going along getting near the end now it's going to be the last couple I think this is the last one and then we're on to one of the other pins so you can see different, totally different reading there and totally different reading there now if we compare that to the one that I've just um, that I initially had a problem with the up direction um, pin 2 this is the up direction can you see that's about a K just over a K 1.1 K now when I had the fault where up wasn't working that was measuring, um, in fact it's gone up to 300 ohms now, that's interesting, um, it was measuring about 500 ohms or thereabouts, so you see it's gone back to 1.1k again, whether that's going to change over time, just give it a second or two, um, no it's not, but anyway that was 500 ohms and as soon as I put VCC onto it, it started working, took VCC away and it was back up to just over a k, which is really weird, um, and if I measure the second pin, you'll say 300 ohms. Next one, 1300 ohms roughly, 1330, 1360ish, something like that. That's a bit higher, almost 1400 there. Um, and it's the same all the way along, so all the other pins on this particular chip, in terms of the I.O. pins, um, are measuring around 1300 to 400 ohms. But go, let's say go back to that first, this the first pin, it's actually pin 2 actually. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Um, so there is definitely something going on with the, the internal pull-up on that one. Um, not sure if there's something else wrong with this one, like I say, because it skips the, the, the last Ninja 3 uh, intro. That's the only fault with it. It works, you know, I can put it in there. The disk drive works, the keyboard works, the controller works, games work. And aside from needing a pull up resistor on pin 2, it, it's, it's fine. So, yeah, for test purposes, it's fine. But anyway, just moving on to some of the others here. Um, the, other, the other check that I've been doing here is you can measure from VCC to ground just to see what its own internal uh, resistance is across the 
supply, you know, the supply lines and things. So you look at what what's that? That's about 5.6 meg on that test one. Um, so we're in the in a range of mega ohms. Um, so this is another good working one, four and a half meg. So it's easy to assume from there. Yeah, you're not going to get exactly the same, but you're going to get something around the mega ohms region. You know, anything of k or you know hundreds of k is going to be a problem. And if we go to this next one, you'll see that's like half a meg. So that's a bit lower, 0.5 meg, but it's still in the you know a, a, quite a large resistance value there. If we go to this other top, this other the top one here, the top CIA. This one I know is got a ridiculously low value, 1400 ohms across the supply. So I think that that's probably part of the failure mode of this chip. Um, you know, some has catastrophically failed there and we've got a, a, a pretty much a supply short. But the other thing you can do here is uh, do the same sort of thing with the data pins. Um, and I might have these pins around the wrong way, let's just have a quick look. Um, yes, yeah, so the data pins are sort of somewhere up here. That one seems okay. If we do measuring resistance again, let's just this one, this is another good working one again. Nothing there. Check this next one. Data pins are up here. Straight away you start to see um, some values come back here, I think. Have I got these right way around? Yeah, can you see that? 118 ohms from VCC. Um, is that VCC? Is it ground? Let me just check the schematics again. Hang on a sec. Yeah, pin 20 is VCC, so we're we'll measuring from VCC to the data pins. Um, and that's like, I don't know, it's D, DB4 or DB5, I forget. And if we measure the one next to it, 772 ohms. Now, contrary, you know, if you measure one of these ones that works, like I say, from VCC to the data pins, we get nothing. So we've got two data pins on there that are potentially knackered. You know, you've got uh, some very low resistance there to the VCC line. So that is the second, that's, you know, that's a failure mode for that one, even though the, the resistance is about half a meg from VCC to ground. We've got a problem with a couple of data pins on there. And then it's no surprise that if we measure this one, um, same way, we get the same low resistances, not quite the same values, but we get a, a, a there on that data pin again, it's in exactly the same position it was on the previous chip and on the pin next to it, just as it was on the previous chip. And if you look at these, you can see they were both week 30, 1988. These came from the same board, which is why they both got the Tipex blob on there. So at some point, perhaps when there was, um, maybe when I was looking at a board back then, I was trying to swap chips and things around and these Tipex marks were probably to indicate that that chip had been swapped out from something else and it still didn't work. So I guess these two were both faulty because they both got the same data inputs faulty. They probably both failed in the same system. I mean it could be that something else failed in that system to, d to damage the, data bus, the two data bus inputs there as well. Perhaps the CPU because these do connect to the CPU, those, that data line, you know, the data bus there goes to the CPU. So, in that particular system, that might be why that system was not f fixed, you know, because it was a bit of trial and error back then. We didn't have full schematics, we didn't have pinouts or anything like that. It was uh, quite a lot of trial and error. But um, anyway, I thought you might find that interesting. Um, it's always nice to put your mind at rest with these things, you know, because one of the things I thought with this, and the reason that, and the reason why I wanted to look at these and just, you know, just do some quick checks, was if there's a pull up failed on here, um, sorry, I'm just off camera, if there's a pull up failed on here, on pin 2, you know, the up direction of this, and it can be solved by adding an external pull-up, as I've proven, it kind of stood to reason in my mind that maybe, there's even a black screen, maybe pull-ups have failed in multiple places on here, um, and maybe that's why it's given a black screen, because it's just, you know, you're just getting the incorrect response from these all the time. Something's, uh, you know, it's not being pulled uh, high when it should be. Um, so it was just a stab in the dark, really. I thought, you know, I'll check these, and if we've got any pull-ups missing, I'll stick some pull-ups on them and try them and try them in my test board, just to see them get around that black screen. But um, one of them certainly got um, this particular top one, like I say, I think it has, has got um, a, a failure mode where the, you know there's something across the uh, VCC to ground. So that's one issue with that. And then the two data pins, and on this one seems to be just to do two data pins. There may well be something else wrong with these internally, you know. It's, but they seem to have failed in a very similar way. Um, one is just more um, affecting the, 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 the supply line. I reckon if you plug one of them in, your, v, your, your, your voltage might dip a little bit um, on your 5 volts line, whereas the other one, it won't. But there's certainly a problem with two of the um, data bits there. And there's no telling what else is you know, wrong internally, but it's, um, it's always worth doing this. So I'll now probably put those in the bin, because I don't think there's anything else I can do with them. But like I say, this test one, um, yeah, I'll stick. You know, I'll put, leave the test, um, the, the resistor on there to um, solve the problem with the um, up direction. 
uh, and just continue to use that as a, a test um, component really. Um, I might report back on these um, later in a separate video perhaps, um, I'm not going to do anything with the PLA and the SID just yet but I will just keep those for now until I have more time to have a look at those. So the clue there's a problem with the supply, the supply on this one, you know, the VCC to ground line. I mean, other than that short, that low resistance there, 1400 and odd ohms, you can see that, if I just keep that in place. Um, you can do the same thing, you can measure from VCC to each of the data, well not data, but IO lines. And you can see resistance appearing there, 3.4k, that's more likely to be the actual, actual internal pull up of 3.3k, um, I think. But you can measure that. And you shouldn't be able to from the ground because um, these are pull-ups. The fact that it's showing 3.4k, and if I compare to say a working chip down here, you'll see you get values in the range of mega ohms again: 4.5 meg, 4. Point, sorry, 4.85 meg, 4.85 meg, AA. Yeah, so you, you can't measure those. You don't get those low, you know, 3.3ish k resistance values coming back that you do on this chip. So yeah, this def that one definitely needs to go in the bin. Something's, let's like, say, shorting to um, VCC um, to ground, effectively. We've got components sort of totally burnt out in there somewhere. But uh, in this one, that is not the case. Like I say, you measure across there, you've got 3.7 odd meg or something. Um, and again, like I say, if I measure the uh, IO pins, you're in the region of mega ohms, not K. Um, so there is a different failure mode slightly. Uh, between these two but the two data pins are still an issue on both of these in exactly the same places so yeah it's I would suggest that perhaps the fault has been external to this unless one uh, I don't know if these are connected in parallel the data lines they're probably not um, well I said I wasn't going to do anything with these PLAs um, but I did I did some measurements <laughs> you're gonna like this it's funny um, I took the, P the working PLA out of this board and put both of the two PLAs on top of each other piggybacked um, individually they don't work they both get the black screen but if I switch it on now just watch this so yeah it's actually booting up you get weird things there's obviously glitches see that there that's actually all right so the two fighting monster each other almost bring the system to life, <laughs> which is quite humorous really, but it's sort of the thing you'd expect because this is doing no more than some ad address decoding. And from the measurements I took, um, I forget which way around these are now, that one is the one that um, gives weird colours and things like so, and if I just switch it on like that, you see you just get a black screen, if it's off and on, you might get something different going on let's see if we can get it to spring to life like that so that's the issue with that one and uh, measuring some of the pins I think it was the top four up here in you just measure in resistance mode between each of those top four pins there's resistance there shouldn't be uh, whereas like this one there isn't um, and this one is somewhere else on the chip so I think the two th let's say the reason this works is because the deficiency in one part of the decoding is kind of handled by the other chip so and it, but it's not you know it's not reliable enough um, you see there look at the weird color stuff going on the two you know the two are fighting it out it's not like um, this is a permanent way you could fix this by sticking two PLAs together but yeah yeah actually I might just keep these two chips solder them together and go actually you can use this as a test PLA expect weirdness um, yeah but there's certainly no value in uh, you know keep you know in, in using these using that as a permanent solution. Um, I just thought you found that interesting. Um, it's just yet another weird thing I found from trial and error and experimentation and stuff with these. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.